Welcome to Engineered Arts. Today I'd love to show you around our robot factory. For those that don't know, we make the most entertaining humanoid robots around, including our Mesmer line of ultra-realistic robots. And of course, Robo Thespian here. Hi Morgan, thanks for the introduction. But alas, it's not all about me. Today it's about the real people who make all of this possible. That's right. It takes many humans to make a robot like this. So who said that robots are taking humans' jobs? Before we take a look in there, let's take a look out there. We start our journey in mechanical design, where we take new ideas, concepts and features that we want to add to the robots. And we also take raw 3D scans of real people in order to create robot versions of them. My name's Will Jackson. I founded Engineered Arts back in 2005 and I am now one of its directors. These are the things that really interest me. So compliance in motion, fluidity in the motion, balance and just general sort of gracefulness biological motion, it's how, how do we emulate that. I did some of the design work on some of the early Mesmer shoulders, um, which are sort of four axis parallel mechanisms um, that were really cool, the movement was really fluid on them. But think about all the other aspects that come down the line of it needs to have electronics mounted to it, it needs to have cable routing, it needs to be assembled. It's also got to look good. The mechanical design guys relentlessly come up with small, complex parts which need to be made and tested quite quickly. We have a workshop full of CNC machines, 3D printers and the awesome people who operate them. Just the CNC machines that we've got, got here are two vertical milling machines and the five axis mill turn machine. Uh, we use the 3D printer to make moulds so that rubber can be poured in to make the faces. Smaller sheet material, like 2mm material, can uh, be bent on the press brake and that will shape it to different angles. OK, well this part here is a very good example of how 5-axis mill turn machine really comes into its own. Once the parts have been machined and marked, they need to be carefully assembled, along with all the electronics and the cabling. Now the electronics guys design, prototype and test all of the electronics that goes inside a robot. Now that could be motor drivers, could be audio amps, and it also includes the tiny little cameras inside Mesmer eyes. So using our own DC motors with encoders allows us to get a far more accurate and precise level control. Sometimes you buy something off the shelf and you have to use their software, you have to use their firmware and you, you're kind of stuck to what, whatever they designed it to be and we have our own specific needs. It takes more time to do it, it's the same like standard as like only buy off the shelf but yeah, it's worth it in the long term. We have over a hundred robo-thespians installed around the world in national science centres, visitor attractions and at events and conferences. Custom characters as Mesmer robots can be built in 16 weeks and Robofespian, our more robotic robots, can be built in four to six weeks. Aesthetic excellence is one of our core values. We really want to make our Mesmers look as lifelike as possible and it takes some really talented people to make that happen. So there isn't really a manual on how to make a humanoid robot, so it's, yeah, it's always a challenge. Got some uh, little 3D printed teeth here and tongues. Uh, we 3D print these on the little, we've got some smaller 3D printers and then we hand paint them all. Um, eyeballs, quite enjoy making eyeballs. We've got a selection of eyeballs knocking around the place. They're really good fun to make. Because we're building costumes for robots, they obviously haven't got quite so much flexibility as a human form. We have to do tricks where we just split jackets in half so we can get them on quickly and get them off quickly as well so that can be quite challenging. It's now up to these lovely creative people to make the robots perform and generally show off all of the wow that we've created. I'm ready for my close-up. The robots are very complicated, have loads of different motions and parts and it's my job to break that down, ensure it is accessible to, to anybody looking at it and to make it understandable. You're, you're sort of you're working with keyframes, 
that you drop into a timeline. You can you animate like each bit individually. Like you can select like the eyes, the arms, hands, and such. You know, as a photographer and videographer, I think there's there's nothing better than having like a really interesting subject to shoot. Um, and you can't get much more interesting than a bunch of robots. Our internal motto is be wow. And for the software developers, this means easy to use, powerful robot operating systems. So you might think, well, we make robots, so we use ROS, right? No, we don't. We actually have created our own operating system that we call Tritium. Tritium is everything we need to make the best robots we can. Um, and so hopefully it's also what anybody else needs to make the best robots they can as well. I think the future that Tritium is going to have is collaboration with all your devices and making it really slick. Uh, it's going to provide a, a solid core development platform for, for controlling robots, not just our robots, but other people's. For visualising all the information on the boards, all, this, all the, uh, the control parameters, the the, the sensors reading everything, we, we look into Tritium. There's a device UI there. We just plot everything and we can see everything in real time. Yeah, having robots that can walk around and, and go and make you coffee. Acrobatics. <laughs> I want to see our robots backflip. Communication is very important. Uh, it is designed for people to be able to interact with robots, which could be physically thousands of miles away. It's, I suppose every day is different. Um, it's not just sitting at a desk. Some days I'm sitting down painting or hair punching. Other days I'm doing some sort of mechanics or some general workshop stuff. Robots as a field is massively exciting. The uh, ingenuity, the innovation is amazing. It's quite fast paced. There's always something new. We're always, we're always striving to create new, new ways of doing things, new techniques. Everybody is of the same opinion, which is just because nobody's done it before doesn't mean that that's a reason that they're not going to be able to do it and they're not going to do it today, which is really good. I've always liked the idea of a um, like a classical statue being turned into a mesmer. I'd probably say like John Lennon, Paul McCartney, something like that. Maybe you know Zafford Box from Hitchhiker's Guide. He's got like two heads. Maybe be someone like David Attenborough. Because he, I mean, he is a legend. When I don't want to go out, it'd be quite nice to have a robot avatar like this that I can send to the pub with my mates. I would make a Beyoncé robot because she's fierce and empowered. Probably Arnold because he's the Terminator so it fits. There's got to be Dolly Parton uh, singing 9 to 5. Just a friend, a, a dancing partner, that would be good. Probably Donald Trump, the caricature we did a couple of years back. Yeah, we could have quite a bit of fun with it, quite a few laughs. Well, I think definitely the Mesmers, which is the, which is the humanoid robots, actually getting the arms to move properly, uh, and the eye movement was very good as well. When I first started, we did a giant King Kong head from Adam Two Swords in London and New York. Uh, that was a really cool project, just because of the scale of it, really. I've learned so many techniques and methods that I would never have thought of before. They taught me everything I know now. I've just gained a, a vast knowledge on how to use the CNC machines and the software to produce the tool paths for it. I started working here with almost no experience whatsoever and I kind of learned on the job. Um, so my skills have developed massively from basically nothing, which is good. I was very lucky. Last time I counted, I think we had robots in 27 countries. I personally have been on quite a few of those trips to install and went on a lot of them in the early days to the US. Canberra in Australia. Canada. New York. Italy. Thailand. India. Dubai. All over Europe, Spain, Germany. In Florida. China. Netherlands. Paris. Uh, Las Vegas. I lose track. Oh yeah, we've been to California as well. It's just amazing being around so many like intelligent, and talented people, it really sort of helps to keep you motivated and inspired. It's amazing how much like people want to get on with what they're doing, but at the same time, everyone's got time for you. It feels like a real big community. People are happy all the time, joke around and, and still deliver all stuff, so it's a very good environment. We distinguish ourselves by not integrating other people's but components, but by doing everything from the ground up. So 
it's very, very highly integrated and it's beautiful. And this is why we all do what we do, to bring our amazing robots to big trade shows like this, Jitex in Dubai.